This is Channel 4. Now the start of a new three-part drama, John McGrath's Blood Red Roses, the story of a fighting woman, Bessie Gordon. Covering the same period as Paradise Postponed, it paints an altogether harsher picture of a world where hope is hard-earned, but for that very reason is held on to even harder. As much as it hath pleased Almighty God to take the soul of our dear departed Alexander, we therefore commit Alexander's body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, we stand at this graveside and give thanks for the life departed. We also give thanks to thee for our own lives. At this time, we think particularly of those he has left behind, of his daughter, Bessie, who was born here amongst us, and though she has been away for several years, will be remembering her childhood here, those days of happiness and innocence before she left us to support her father in his Kilbride. Oh God, the unseen presences. This is Jack, Betty. He's a friend of mine. We'll be going with him in his car. But what about my dad? It's tonight he comes home. I've got to go, love. Jack, get the bags in the car. Bessie, I've packed your case. Get in the car. You're coming with me. You're coming with me.
Janie? Janie? Mrs. Gordon? Wife? Bessie. Is it you, Dad? It is. I feel as if I'm seeing a ghost. Do you? Well, many's the time I damn near was one. Do you help me sit, girl? Nonsense. Norway, Singapore, Italy, Normandy. All war. Palestine, Malaya. It's all over now. Chinese bazooka took my leg from me. It was time. I missed you, Obi girl. I missed you too. Oh, I didn't expect a hero's welcome. Getting your leg blown off is just. Incorrect military procedure. But I did think she might be in after 12 years. She's gone. Oh. When is she returning to base? She's gone away. Forever. With her man. It's not very good. I wouldn't go. She tried to take me from you, but I wouldn't let her. For him. Ah, yes. Well, thank you, Bessie. I'm proud of you. What should we do now? Go to Glasgow. Your Aunt Ella stays in Glasgow. We'll go there. Should we go tonight? <laughs> no, no. Not tonight. I'm tired now. Would you like a cup of tea? Thank you. A cup of tea. Can you make a cup of tea now, girl? And scones. You like scones? <laughs> Oh. 
roast a venison off Angie's dad with meats and taddies. That should do you some good. I was up the next morning at half past five. He was already out, seeing Angie's dad about the livestock, raising a couple of quid, he said. And by half past seven, we were away. <laughs> to seek our fortune. Excuse me. Excuse me. Right I'll take your bags. You need a man in your life. And how much would you charge? Never negotiate with women. Come on, here's your bags. I need to know. I come in, buy all your heat. She with you? Yes, she is. And I'm proud of her. Tell me, in which general direction lies East Kilbride? <laughs> Miles away, pal. You're not going to walk. Well, it says East Kilbride near Glasgow. If it's near, we shall walk. See you, Chuchters. Get out of here with the fairies. In the end, we had to get a bus. The wee man was right. It was miles. I might have known. I am your brother, Ella. So you say. But where have you been since 1939? Well, I... Don't tell me. Don't tell me. And now you turn up on my doorstep at two in the morning. And this, I suppose, is Bessie. Hm. For the sake of the poor wee child, I'll take you in. I'm a Christian woman. I'll take you in for the night. We open this tin of sardines. Okay, Bessie. Katrina. She was my best friend. We grew up together. And as we were growing up, so is the new town, all around us. Sandy! 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 Come down here at once! Sandy, are you deaf? Come down here! Come down? I've already peeled six pounds of tatties, woman. 
and pluck this fowl I killed. There is a letter for you. That's very good. It is not good. You have given them this address. Given? No, no, Ella. Merely lent it to them for the purpose of sending me this letter. I'm sorry, Sandy, but this address is not yours to give or to lend. This letter does not even say care of Mrs. Wilson to imply that it is merely temporary. Well, I'm telling you, Sandy, turning up unannounced with your little daughter at three in the morning, that's one thing. But using this house as if it was your own, peeling great mounds of potatoes all day, slaughtering the chickens and frightening Katrina with your tin leg, and, well, now this. It is quite another thing. If the Development Corporation got to hear of me keeping lodgers through that Irish postman, they could turn us out back to the misery of Bridgeton that we've now risen above. Would you look at the time? Where are those girls? Katrina! Betty! Come down here! Come down this minute! Oh! Sandy Dorton! You will leave this very day! I'm sorry about the mess, Ella. Our way, Highland Lassie. Katrina doesn't want to do that today, Miss Doughty. And why ever not? Lost her tongue? That's unusual. There's nothing special about you, Bessie Gordon, even though you seem to think you're very special indeed. So you may as well get on with it. I'll have no weaklings in my gymnasium. Don't you dare talk to me like that, you insolent girl. You will report to the headmistress at once. You're a poor loser. as if I was a sheep dog. Now, boys are inclined to scoff about marriage, because marriage is, of course, not so important in a man's life. But for you girls, well, marriage is what life is all about, eh? Oh, yes. He's making me sick. Well, tradition has it that the man takes the initiative in marriage. He pops the question, so to speak. Sir, I'm feeling sick. I think it's what you're saying. Sit down, Bessie. No. Yes, he pops the question. But uh, we all know that you're all busy, even now, learning little feminine wiles. You're flutterings and enticements to draw the man of your choice into your snare, as it were, eh? <laughs> But he is, after all, the man whose children you will bear and devote your life to rearing, the man whom you have to send off happy in the morning to his work and welcome home with good food and good cheer in the evening. Shite. Would you... Mutter something, Bessie Gordon. I said shite, sir. I think you're talking a load of shite. Now, Bessie, I cannot allow you... As a Christian, I shall turn the other cheek. Though, of course, I will be speaking to your head mistress. Shall we continue? What are the qualities that we must look for in a man? Well, kindness, I suppose. Patience, yes. A good, hard worker. Diligent at home and in the factory, yes. And above all, a man who will listen to your little complaints and understand your little problems. A man who will guide you in the path of life to acceptance. 
and content. Bessie, sit down. You are a depraved child. Ah! Go and talk such rubbish. Sir. Mr. Gordon. Oh, my dear old dad. A soldier. How he stood up for me. And how he stood up to me. Like no man since. My dear old dad. Go on. Bessie! Get away without your bully beef girl. Rule number one. An army marches on its belly. Thanks, Dad. No. T. Yes. I shall give her bristles. It's such a beautiful day, Bessie. I keep thinking something really smashing's going to happen. Could this be my lucky day? Could this be the day for Mr. Wright? Oh, no. Not after the last one. Did I tell you what he tried on? He said he was medically in need of gratification. I told him he should see a doctor. Garrels, you're looking devastating today. Funny, she's all right tonight. All right, for what? You wouldn't know what to do with it if you got it. Hey, come on down the main shed and bring your friend. Aye, we'll maybe show you our duck sticks. Two young ladies think you're doing. Katrina's no well, Mrs. Dundonald. I was feeling sick, miss. I was going to be sick. Sick? You came to work, you expect to be paid. She only began to feel sick a few minutes ago, Mrs. Dundonald. Sir, now she needs to vomit. And are you ill too, Bessie Gordon? Is there an epidemic? Well, she can hardly stand up. And if you want to know why, it's because that place stinks of chemicals and human beings should not be working in it. It's all hot, there's no air in it. If Scottish account machines are making money out of this place, why do they not fix these ventilators and put in a few windies? There's a wee clump of trees just the other side of the wall us. I'd love to see them. And to have a wee windy to shut when it rains, OK? Bessie Gordon, go back to your work. You're holding up the entire production line. No. I'm seen to Katrina. I'm her cousin. Back to work with yourself, miss. And if you have any complaints about the ventilation, kindly make them through the proper channels. And what are the proper channels? Me. 
Mr. McGuigan is a shop steward. The proper channels is the suggestions box. Now, no more excuses for lazy behavior. Work! I've told you I'm looking after my cousin. You're stealing time from the company. And time after all this money. Are you accusing me of stealing money? You're a lazy, deceitful girl. Disobedient. And yes, a thief. Right, you. You're there for violence to me or you'll suffer for it. You will not leave your post. You let go of me and I'll kill you. You little tyke. You evil oh, son! Oh, wicked! You're all right! Come on, come on, come on! Enough, she's good enough. Keep stay. You lay off me, I'll give you one too. I shall call the police. I shall have her guarded up the prison. Aye, fine, fine, fine. Six months for this. Assault and battery. Aye, very good, excellent. You won't work in this town ever again, Miss Bessie Gordon. Dear, dear, dear. In this town ever again? That adds up to unfair dismissal there. And a threat to jeopardise her employment potential in future years. That is a serious offence, Mrs. Dundonald. I would hate to think that this would cost you in damages. Damages? What a of damages she's done to me! You're talking nonsense. Well, I think I'm correct in saying that it was you that laid hands on her first. Lying, insulting criminal. Do you think? But I'm your only witness. Here, let me see what she's done to you, Beth. Oh, my God. Would you look at that, Mrs. Dundonald? You must have scratched her when you attacked her. See that? That looks serious. I'd get away to the hospital with that. That could turn nasty. Ha. I hope this turns out without too much trouble for you, Mrs. Dundonald. See, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> No, for violence to me, a mere bystander. If for any sake, woman, no jury would send her down for six months without putting you away for 18. Alex McMahon, you're an evil, bigoted man. I'll tell you what you are, and don't bother to deny it. You're a member of the Communist Party. What's that a crime, Neil, is it? Eh? Oh, Christ, that'd better get out quick. I mean, every other bugger has since the Russians invaded Hungary, eh? I mean, how, how know me? Oh, you're right, I'd better get out. You feeling better for your own? Aye. Well, she's doing me the power of good. You see, there again, Bessie here is quite correct. Conditions in there is contrary to the provisions of the Factories Act 1843. Not to mention the Mines and Quarries Act of 1954. The poisoning of this young lassie's system here can only be laid at the door of the supervisor of this bay. Namely, yourself. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Ah, I know. I, know, I, I mean, I do know how you must feel, Mrs. Dunn. Why don't you go and try and put your feet up for five minutes, eh? And we'll try and forget about your threats and your slanders and your offers of violence. Miss Welterweight Champion of Scotland, 1956. I want a word with you. You try that kind of thing one more time, you're likely to end up in a jail. Christ, you're lucky you're not your way there at the moment. Here, are you listening to what I'm telling you? Aye. You lay off me or I'll start on you. Oh, well, will you now? Just who are you exactly? I'm sorry. I'm Alex McGuigan. I'm your shop steward. And I should have been to visit you before now. Right. Can I see your union cards, please? If you work here, you've got to belong to the AEU. I'm afraid it's a closed shop. No join, no job. Why? Well, put it this way. If you want to fight her and her superiors, you're wasting your time with fisticuffs. The only way to fight and win is to join the union. And that doesn't mean one or two of us, or those of us that feel like it, but all of us. So we have a rule. No join, no job. That's no right. What if I don't like unions? We are fighting a war on this shop floor. We're fighting for our eyesight, and our food, and our clothes, and for the right to have a job in the first place. You give these buggers half a chance and they'll take away everything we've won from them over the past hundred years and make sure we haven't got the organised power to ever get it back again. Well, I for one, I'm not prepared to give them that half chance. You call yourself a fighter, eh? 
Aye, well, so am I. And I can't afford to lose. So you join this union now, or I'll stop this hail plant until you've gone. OK? Aye, OK. I'll think about it. Are you married? What? No. You can come up to the house for a wee blether then. Do uh, you drink? It's not a lot. I'll get something for you. Right. I better get on work now, Alex. Can you come tonight? Well, I can't come tonight. Tomorrow then? I'll beat you the gate at five. Aye, OK, Bess. Aye, right. And you're a communist? Yes, I am. My father's leg got blown off a while I use. He'll be pleased to meet you. I just happened to be taking six pints of tartan special for a walk, when... Oh, no. Or ambushed by double glazing salesmen. Of a particularly persuasive nature. I've had everything double glazed, including the wife. Excuse me, gentlemen. Could interest you in a pint of tartan special. Oh. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. And in a single glazed glass. Tartan special. They always fall for it. Mm. Safe at last, eh? Don't count on it. Here come the cavity wall insulation, boy. Here's a present for everyone doing their Christmas shopping this year. It's big. It's exciting. And once you get into it, you won't be disappointed because there's something in it for everyone. With hundreds of different and unusual gifts to choose from, you can wrap up all your Christmas shopping in one. Boots. It's everything you ever wanted for Christmas. I'm just leaving. I'll be home in about two hours. Vauxhall presents the all-new Carlton with advanced chassis technology to help cope with those little problems we all encounter from time to time. Advanced chassis technology means that if one side of the road has become a trifle slippery, the new Carlton will still stop in a straight line. And as for those annoying little emergency lane changes, well, the new Carlton can steer safely through them. The all-new Vauxhall Carlton. Oh, hello. How was the journey? Fine. You could say it's put the skids under its rivals. Because we thought that making filter coffee was sometimes a bit of an effort, we made Brook Bond Red Mountain. <laughs> Red Mountain is freeze-dried, so it tastes fresh and richly roasted. <laughs> Red Mountain. It's like ground coffee taste without the grind. A soldier's a man till he's shot or he's shelled, and then he's a soldier no longer. He's thrown to the wall to grow old and to grieve and to think of his life and to wonder. Once again along the banks of the Suez Canal, as Britain, alongside France and Israel, attempts to restore order in this troubled area. The airborne first wave of the reoccupation quickly established two beachheads, one at Port Fouad, the other to the west of Port Said. British tanks made rapid progress through Port Said itself and were soon heading off south towards Ismailia and Suez. 
Since President Nasser nationalized Hello. this international waterway, there's been a series of threats to disrupt the peaceful operation of the canal. British naval units are patrolling... It would appear we've decided to go in. Side, Poor old Gamal Abdel Nasser's for it now, eh? The lads will be watching a few uh, belly dancers jangling the jewels in his malia tonight. And up to Port Suez first thing in the morning. Well, there goes the clap and a terrible hangover. No doubt about it. I've got some rustles in the cookhouse. Uh, shall we fry them or uh, uh, pop them in the oven? I'm sticking them in the pan. Dad! Yes? It's all right if I bring a friend home to his tea tomorrow night. Did you say his? Yes, he's a man. Well, of course, I look forward to meeting him. Uh, it's Friday tomorrow. Would lamb chops be suitable? He's a communist. Oh, I've come across them before. During the war, it was quite common to uh, find a Bolshevik in your bivouac. Uh, what's his name? McGuigan. Oh. Football supporter. Moscow Dynamo. Oh. Could be anything. McGuigan. He's only coming for his tea, Dad. <laughs> It was no romance with Alex. Sometimes it was lovely. Well, once or twice, but mostly it was hard work in the class war. Yes, I lost my little darling The night they were playing The beautiful Tennessee war Yes, that's but I just asked you in time, eh? So you did. to the notice, no confetti, please. Thank you. Thank you. Those were the days. A real nice flat at the top of the hill under the pine trees. Dad was persuaded to come as well, of course. Some way or other, I never seemed to see much of Alex. He was always rushing off into some struggle or other, even at the times when I needed him most. Where's Alex gone? He's had to go. Go? <laughs> Alex, wait! You can't go now. There's an election on, woman. First things first. She's ready to go. Oh, Christ, can she not get a taxi? I'm going to miss these folk. Oh, Christ. I'm sorry, Sandy. I'll see you later, right? There's a perfectly good bus service. Taxi, indeed. He said to get a taxi. Oh, I fine. 
Well, you better get one then, Katrina. These pains are coming every... two minutes. Oh, he's got a point. I mean, we've got to get every supporter, dead or alive, to the polls before they close. Oh, I can hear him say it. Will you be all right while I get a taxi? I'm sorry, you have no mother at this time. Oh, I've still got you, though, Dad. My dad. Nine pounds, two ounces, Mrs. McGuigan. Quite a big girl. <laughs> I can see that again. <laughs> Have you got a name for her yet? My mother's name ah. is Jane. Jane? I think Jane's a lovely name. Janie McGuigan. Born 8th of October 1959. Ah. Any school bride. I wonder who your granny's got to. Ah. And she'd be proud of you. I miss her. So will you, Jane. Ah, but wait till you see your dad. Oh, he's awfully serious. Percy. Alex. It's Harold McMillan for another five years. Janie McGuigan, our life. Is that her? Would you like to hold her? Aye, I would. No. Oh. Thanks. Oh. Would you look at that, eh? You another bony fechter, eh? We're gonna need you to get rid of these Tories, eh? Oh, Christ, Bessie, what are we gonna do, eh? After eight years, it's included torturing folk in Holocamp in Cyprus, invading the Suez Canal, manufacturing H-bombs. Christ, I'm ashamed of the working class of this country. How could folk no see what they did? Give me the baby, Alex. I'm sorry, Bessie, it was... I know, I know, but I'm too tired, and she's too wee, just at the minute. And when she grows up, Scotland will be a socialist republic. That's what we're fighting for, no? Aye. She's lovely. And you know. Did I do well? Aye, you did. Tell me then. Oh, never mind her. She said it all before. Bessie, you're great. No, well, you didn't do so bad yourself. Tell my dad, will you? Tell him I'll see him at visiting time. And tell him she looks just like my mum and we're calling her Jane. Will we? Oh, and tell Katrina, there's nothing to it, right? Right, then. Cheerio. See you tomorrow, eh? He didn't he kiss me. She's a beautiful baby. And you did very well. Thanks.
I mean, it's politics four. If we couldn't do that. You're going to put your foot up. Come on, that's it. Right, come on, push it in, push it in. Right, okay. That's it. Oh. All through a hole in your head. Hugh Gatescoat and Tony Crossland are beating your so-called Labour Party built pink with purple frills. Clause 4 is the plank your party is building on them. They're busy trying to chop it off. Well, no, let them. Oh, aye. And how are you going to stop them, eh? That's a $64,000 question. How are you going to stop them? I just thought I'd say hello. Hello, Gordon. You both blind, I what? We saw you. Christ, what you want? Around round your applause. <laughs> See you, Alex, solving all these terrible problems. Aye, and he can't wash a pan. I have been making moussaka. Greek mints and tatties. Hello, Aunt Ella. Where's Jane? Oh, no. Did you not get my note? Note? Oh, I'll go and get her. She had to be uplifted by 3.30 the day the woman said. The woman had to go. I promised her you'd... Oh, never mind. I'll go, I'll go. You get with us. No, no. I didn't see any note. Well, what's that, then? Dear Dad, please go and get Jane by 3.30 as Miss Coates is leaving early. I never saw that. Let me have a look. I'll go in the bay. You stay here. I told you, Alex, I'll go. I want to go. Miss Cotts is leaving her. Stay here. Ella's come to see you. No, 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 no. Oh, don't worry about me. It's that poor child you should be concerned about. Where did you leave this? I'll go in the bike. Where is this nursery? No, I'll tell you what, I'll go. I know where it is. Stop it. And you shut up. Well. I'm not going to sit here to witness scenes like that one and then be told to shut up. Away you go, then. You're as hard and heartless as that mother of yours. And if you go off and desert your little daughter as your mother deserted you, that little girl will grow up to be as bad as both of you. I'm no deserting my daughter. Then where are you all day? Now, listen, Ella, you've Just no right Keep out of this, Alex. 
I'll tell you where I am all day. I'm at my work. I'm staying up late with the grown-ups, OK? And when my daughter grows up, she'll love and respect me for it. Just as I love and respect my mother for doing what she had to do. Your and mother? And if you say one more word, I'll do something I'm likely to regret. So don't. I'm away for Jean. She's my daughter, my responsibility, and she's going to be all right. Well. Hmm. And so she was all right. And I carried on with my work. Then one day, when was that? This was the start of something. A group of men came round with plans and papers. Meeting 12.45, Loden Bay 3, right? 12.45, Loden Bay 3, meeting, right? Meeting 12.45, Loden Bay 3, OK. That means everybody. 12.45, OK. 12.45, Loden Bay 3, meeting. You know, eh? Loden Bay 3, 12.45. What's all this thing's happening? Should I know? I'm only married to you. So? I bought a copy of the London Financial Times. Here it is. And what do you read? An article describing Scottish accounting machines as shaky and ripe for reorganisation. That was last Monday. This week, we're in the news again. Rival factions have been quietly buying up shares in SAM for the past two months now, trying to gain control. On Monday, the winner in the blue corner was something called Intertrust London Limited. That's ILL for short. Since Monday, ladies, these are the fingers in our pockets. There's are the beady eyes in your jobs. But has anybody ever heard of them? No. But that wee team in there is the first signs of the reorganisation that is to come. They're no letting the grass grow on their feet, are they? I will neither must we. We are demanding a meeting with top management to find out just exactly what's going on. Here's your convener now, Charlie, to say a few words to you. Aye, thank you, Alec. Ladies, management are refusing to hear word of a meeting until their plans are formulated. They're refusing to talk to us. Now, there's a lot to be said about SAM, but at least they never closed the door on our faces. The question is, who are these people? And what are they planning to do to us? <laughs> 